Good morning, friends, and welcome. Please stand. Welcome to those who have joined with us uh, on our live stream on this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. We are delighted to have you with us today. Let us pray. Go before us, O Lord, in this our act of worship, in our lives and in all that we do with your most gracious favor. Further us, O God, with your continual help, that in all our works, having begun in you, they will continue in you and end in you. We may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening sentence comes to us from Matthew's Gospel. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Our processional hymn, Praise my soul, the King of heaven. Friends, good morning once again and welcome to those of you who have joined us in person and those joining us now live via our live stream. I figured that on a day like today we may be fewer in number and so I will ask those who have joined us live to sing a little louder so that we can hear you uh, through the cameras. And of course, for those of you who have joined us in person, I invite you to lift your voices as we sing and praise and worship to God this day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for the readings from Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 1 to 8. Hear what the Lord said. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I worried you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab divide. What Balaam son of Boa answered him? And what happened from Shittim to Gilgal that you may know the saving acts of the Lord? With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves, a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly, with your God, the word of the Lord. God. Please remain seated as we say together Psalm number 15. Psalm number 15. Together we say, Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his sight, the wicked is rejected, 
but he honors those who fear the Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does not give his money in hope of gain, nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 18 to 31. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greek desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews, and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are, who are the called, both Jews and the Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world. Shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world, to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world. Things that are not, to reduce to nothing. Things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gradual hymn.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus saw the crowd, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be fed. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and other all kinds of evil against you falsely on mine account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, let us pray. Good and gracious God, in whose presence and by whose grace alone we stand this day. We pray, O oh God, that you give us eyes to see your hand at work in our lives, to see your life modeled before us, and give us grace, O oh Lord, to receive this life which you offer us this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Good morning, everyone. And again, welcome to all of you who have joined us uh, in person this day and those now joining us via our live stream. We are happy that you are with us today uh, on this fourth Sunday after the Epiphany. I want to share with you this morning some words from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, reading from verse 30 to 31. There Paul writes that God, who is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Many years ago, uh, in another context in which I was serving as Master of Ceremonies, MC for a program, and then of course more recently here in my time uh, at St. Stephen, I had a particular method for giving out prizes at an event but which also, this method also, and at the same time, taught an important lesson about outward appearances. So if you recall, there were three prizes that were to be given out. Two prizes were relatively fancy, right? They were more desirable than the third, which was simply an ordinary loaf of bread. And of course, how it worked, was that three names were drawn from the hat in order to come forward and to select a prize. All three winners were invited to come forward. And then, in the order in which their names were drawn, 
they were invited to choose which prize they wanted. So I had these three gifts. Two were really nice. And one was an ordinary loaf of bread. Which would you choose? <laughs> so not surprisingly, the person who came, whose name was drawn first, chose what appeared to be the best prize. The person whose name was drawn second chose what seemed to be the second best prize. And the person whose name was drawn last, of course, ended up with that ordinary loaf, yes, of bread. But what no one realized at the time was that hidden inside the packaging of that ordinary loaf of bread was something more valuable than all the prizes combined. In one instance, I remember I used cash. I put some cash inside a plastic bag and stuck it inside the loaf of bread. In another instance, I used a, a gift card right, of significant value and placed that inside the bag with the loaf of bread. Of course, the lesson then became quite obvious. We cannot judge the value of something simply by outward appearances. We cannot judge the value of something simply by outward appearances. On the outside, it may seem like something no one wants, something less desirable than the other offerings there on that gift table. Even if, like a loaf of bread, it is still a good thing to have. I mean, I enjoy a good loaf of bread, right? It's a good thing to have. But when we come a little closer to investigate, when we dig a little deeper into the contents, we discover that its value far surpasses anything we could ever have imagined. Last Sunday I mentioned that the scriptures during the season of Epiphany, which we are now in, invite us to see the ways that God reveals and makes himself known among us. Right? Epiphany is that season in which God makes himself known among the Gentiles, among a people who weren't even looking for this God to come. Today's Gospel reading, known to many of us as the Beatitudes, Jesus painted for his Jewish followers. And of course, for us who have now received these texts, he painted a picture of the life of Beatitude. That is a picture of a life of extreme blessedness. But when we look at this picture, when we look at this life that he describes, it certainly doesn't seem blessed. Right? I mean, look at the words. The poor in spirit. Those who mourn. The meek. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Probably because so many prefer to do wrong. He mentions the merciful. He mentions the pure in heart and those who are peacemakers, likely because they live within a world that is very unmerciful, that is hard-hearted. And then finally, he mentions those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, reviled, falsely lied against because of him. And so this picture he paints is the very epitome of a life that no one wants. I mean, who wants that kind of life? But here it is, Jesus calls this life blessed. Blessed, he says, is this way of life. And you know, in today's world, I find that we become so 
fixated on outward appearances. We're always watching other people, watching what they have, watching where they go, watching what they do. We seem ever to be on high alert for how other people perceive us. Oh, what are people going to think if I wear this? What are they going to think if I say that? What are they going to think if I go there? And so often we think we are blessed when we have material things. And the church is not separated from this, right? Lots of folks in the church think the same way. We think we are blessed if we have material things. Oh, if I have a house, if I have a place to live, I am blessed. And that person over there who's homeless is not. We think if we have food, if we have clothing, we are blessed. These are good things to have. But that does not necessarily mean blessedness, friends. We think that if we have power, if we have some position, if we have influence, if we have some special kind of knowledge, we think we are blessed. Probably the worst kind of it is that when we think we are blessed, when certain tragedies may afflict others but seem to pass us by. Oh, it happened to them, but not to me. I am blessed. But Jesus says, no, no. Here, in these scriptures, here is the life of true blessedness. The life of true blessedness is reflected by those who know their ultimate need and dependence upon the living God. That's the life of blessedness. It is, in reality, a picture of Jesus' own earthly life as we read and listen to the Beatitudes. This is a picture of Jesus' own life, lived in humble and faithful obedience to the will of the Father. And friends, this is the way of life which no one wants. That is, the way of life which no one would instinctively choose for themselves. Because looming over it, of course, is the shadow of the cross. The psalmist in our readings for this morning asks, Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? And one response that is given is, one who does not take back his word. Another translation of that same verse says, those who stand by their oath even to their hurt. Those who stand by their oath even to their hurt. Friends, this way of life which no one instinctively wants, this way of the cross is none but our commitment to not take back our word. And indeed, to stand by our oath of obedience to Christ as Lord, even to our own hurt. That's what it means. You see, this is a life that no one wants because of the cross. Like the disciples, we run away from it. We want to hide. We want to go back to what's comfortable, to where we're not being challenged. We don't want it because walking in the way of the cross is hard work. It costs us something because it requires that we lay down what we oftentimes selfishly want for ourselves, right? Usually our time or our abilities or our money. We have to lay down our own preference for ourselves in order to provide for, in order to make space for what our neighbor truly needs, right? I mean, think about how you feel sometimes when you already have your day all set. How many of you like to plan out your day from morning till evening? You know exactly what you're going to do at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. You know what the day looks like. 
Some people plan out their week, their month, their year, right? But imagine how you feel. Think about how you feel when you already have your time all planned out. And then someone else's needs comes and interrupts or threatens to interrupt those plans. I don't know, maybe you're like Peter and Andrew and James and John from last week's reading. When the call comes, you immediately drop everything and you follow when these sorts of divine interruptions come your way. That's not me. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe you're more like the rest of us. Maybe you go, but you kind of go grudgingly. Because it's a good thing to do, and you know that you should do it, and so you go. And of course, it's the same kind of response, I feel, when the Spirit wants to change certain ways that we think, certain habits of our behavior. We do it, but maybe we do it grudgingly, because we know that we should. Because we have a hunch that it's good for us. But it is not something that we instinctively want. But like that ordinary loaf of bread, when we come a little closer, when we come to investigate this life which God in Christ offers us, which Christ paints for us, when we dig a little deeper, we soon discover that its value in terms of our own transformation and the transformation of the lives of those in the world around us, it far surpasses anything we could ever have imagined. You see, it is a blessed way of life, yes. But today's gospel teaches us that it is a way of living which acts like a lightning rod for persecution. Anyone know how a lightning rod works? You take this, usually a long metallic object with a sharp point, and you put it on the highest point of your building so that when the storms are gathering and the lightning strikes, the lightning is going to strike that rod instead of your building and channel all that energy directly down into the ground, right? This life that Jesus invites us to act like a lightning rod for persecution. If anyone is going to be picked out, it's going to be you when you're following in this way. But what does Jesus say? He says, blessed are you when people revile you, when they persecute you, when they utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, he says, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And so when we embrace this way of life, it's not a question of if, but when we will be persecuted. It doesn't say if you are persecuted. It says when you are persecuted. When we will find ourselves subjected, friends, to hostility and ill treatment. That's what he invites us to. But yet, Jesus beckons us to soldier on in this way of life. Because this is what following him is truly all about. And you know, sometimes we pile so many other things on top of what it really means to follow Jesus, on top of what it really means and what God really requires of us. Right? Oh, I have to dress this way. I can't eat certain things. I have to worship in a particular way or on a particular day. I have to walk a certain way. I have to have certain kinds of friends and not have other certain kinds of friends if I truly want to follow Jesus. But what does the prophet say to us this morning? He says, he has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. That's it. That's what God requires of us. All that other stuff is love. 
when by grace we choose this life which no one wants. Remember that it is God who is, in fact, at work in our lives, redeeming his creation one heart at a time. As I was walking through the aisle in the pharmacy the other day, I heard uh, one of the workers commenting to, to their colleague. And they said, oh, it's such a sad world. It's such a sad world. And I don't know what they were discussing, and I wasn't about to stop on eavesdrop. I don't know what they were discussing, but I guess that, that comment struck me because on one level it's true. There's so much going on in our world today as we look around, as we watch the news or read the newspaper, which shows just how broken our world is, which shows the coldness and the darkness of the human heart. But on another level, that comment struck me as incomplete. Incomplete because there are also many good things going on and happening in our world. There are many who are indeed persevering in the way of the cross, living and walking as salt and light in this world, acting to slow down its decay. But that kind of good news rarely, if ever, hits the media. And the reason for that, we all know, is because it's not considered attractive. It's not like prize number one and two on the table. It's not sensational enough. It doesn't get the high ratings. It's a way of life that no one wants because it interferes with and it interrupts what we really want selfishly to do. And it therefore shows up the coldness, the darkness of our own lives. Friends, it is indeed a very sad world. But look what God has done. Look what God is doing in and through Jesus Christ to redeem it all. And so I believe that the question always before us is this. Will you look past? Will you move past all that glitters, all that dazzles, in this world today. All the variations of life. Oh, live this life and you will live your best life. Will you walk past, look past all these things and choose this one who is truly the bread of life? Amen. Friends, please stand. Let us now, in the words of the Apostles' Creed, confess and reaffirm the faith into which we have been baptized, and the God who shows us the life and the way of true blessedness. As we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, please sit or kneel as we pray. O oh God, whose wisdom surpasses our understanding, help us to grow as a people of blessings as we offer our prayers for the church and the world. We pray for those who mourn, for those who mourn because they have just lost loved ones or mourn because of the changes and challenges associated with this life. We pray especially for those from this congregation who mourn. And we pray especially for the following members of this congregation, not passing through illness or pain, remembering also their caregivers. All pain. For in Carol, Thelma, Thelma, Maureen, Maureen, Joe, Joe, George, George, Clifton, Clifton, Pauline, Pauline, Kathleen, Kathleen, Ruben, Ruben, Nellie, Nellie, Andrew, Andrew, Carmen, Carmen, Rita, Rita, Felicia, Felicia, Ian, Ian, Pat, Pat, Paul. Paul, Ethel, Ethel, Joan, Joan, Doreen, Doreen, Rima, Rima, Hyacinth, Hyacinth, Angela, Angela, Erica, Erica, and Dorothy, Dorothy. We pray for those for whom members of this gathered community have asked our prayers, especially Thelma Chesto. Evelyn Greenwich, Ruth Lynn Hoyt, Iyabo Ogundiran, Joyce Welcome, Eric and Family, Vaughn Martin, Cindy, Leopold Austin, Joy Agard Mighty, Angela Popolo, Elizabeth Papa, Eva Manifold, and Jermaine. <coughs> Forest Lady, Valda and Sarita Domingo, Marielle, Marianne, and Valerie Waters, Shanice Ashney, Florence Umogbai, Diane Denny, Alyssa, Thomas, Latoya, and Athena. We pray for those in our hearts and minds at this time and for those whose needs are known to you and you alone. May they know the comfort of your abiding presence with them. We pray for the meek, who manifest the quiet and gentle confidence of knowing that you are the living God. May they receive the goodness of your earth. We pray for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for those who pray and desire to want what you want. May they be filled with goodness. We pray for those who are merciful, merciful because they are mindful of the mercy which they have received from you. Grant that they also receive mercy from others. We pray for the ministry of mercy offered by our saints Scaffi to those within and beyond our community. We pray for our coordinator, volunteers, 
and all who faithfully offer this ministry week by week. We pray for all who receive groceries, meals, other material supports, a kind word, and Christian friendship through this program. We pray for the pure in heart, for those who seek and search and knock for the kingdom of God and for the church, the community of those seeking after you. May they see your face. May they see you face to face. In the Anglican Church in Canada, we pray for the Provincial Synod of the Ecclesiastical Province of Canada. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the Dean, Council and Congregations of the Ottawa, Ottawa Valley and Seaway areas of the Eastern Synod. In our own Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of Pakistan, United, for its bishops, priests and laity. We pray for the peacemakers, those who seek not to avoid strife, but to press through strife in order that peace may be established in truth and love. May they be recognized as your children. We pray at this time for the people and nation of Sri Lanka as they prepare to commemorate 75 years of independent rule on Saturday of this week. We pray for those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, who know in their lives that following you doesn't mean that the road will be easy. May they know the protection of your realm. We pray for those visiting with us today, either in person or online. We pray that you will continue to send to this community of faith individuals, young families, and children. Make us always ready to welcome and serve them. Lord, meet them wherever they may be in their journey of faith and grant that they may receive your blessings through this gathering. We rejoice this day and give thanks for the many blessings of this life and for the gift of heaven which is ours even now. May we, with your prophets from all the ages, have the wisdom to pursue your truth and the courage to do what is holy and right. We ask all this in the name of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in mercy and infinite in his grace. He welcomes sinners and he invites them to his table. Let us therefore confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, of mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all that is good, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Friends, please stand now for the greeting of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Friends, as we continue in this time of the offertory, I would like to invite those of you who may wish to come forward and to place your offering in the basket provided at the front to do so, uh, guided by our wardens. Uh, For those who are joining us online, if you are here in Canada, you may make a donation at cw-stephendownsview at toronto.anglican.ca. Our offertory hymn, The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want.
We pray together, God of steadfast love, may our offering this day, by the power of your Holy Spirit, renew us for your service. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer, Form 3. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. By water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine and nourish us to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the holy people who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Friends, please sit or kneel as you are able as we continue to pray. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, Death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new cup, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified, made holy by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light, where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom, with whom, in whom, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, all baptized persons are welcome to come and to receive communion at this altar. Please be reminded that only the consecrated bread will be administered. As you come forward, I invite you please to sanitize your hands. I will say to you the words of administration. You'll receive the consecrated wafer in your hand. Please then make your way to one of the sanitizing stations to remove your mask. Place the wafer into your mouth and then replace the mask and sanitize a second time before returning to your seats.
As we continue to sing, if there's anyone who would like to come forward and to pray for a birthday or anniversary, I'd be happy to pray for you at this time. Friends, where you are, please stand and let us pray together the words of the prayer after communion as we give God thanks for this day, for this privilege of walking in this life of true blessedness to which he invites us all, and for participating in this life-giving meal through which we are nourished. We pray together, source of all goodness, in this Eucharist we are nourished by the bread of heaven and invigorated with new wine. May these gifts renew our lives, that we may show your glory to all the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. And again, a very warm welcome to all of you and to our friends uh, who are joining us now live via our live stream. We are, as always, delighted uh, to have you with us. Uh, friends, as we continue into this week, this fourth week after the Epiphany, um, I encourage you to join us uh, week by week for morning prayer, uh, Monday through Friday at 7.15 a.m. on Zoom. And then, of course, this evening uh, at 6 p.m., uh, we will meet for evening prayer. So I encourage you to be with us as you are able uh, to do so. Our Tuesday evening uh, prayer and Bible study group continues at 7 p.m., on Thursday, uh, we will resume our Bible study group as well. Uh, Thursday, that's February 2nd at 7.30 p.m. And as I've said, uh, we will be studying at this time the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we do have a number of study guides available at a cost of $15 each. Uh, we will be guided by our friend, uh, retired Anglican Bishop N.T. Wright. And this prayer uh, is for all of us. As I've said, if you have been praying the Lord's Prayer and saying the words by rote 
but not really listening to what you're saying, uh, this is an important uh, study time for you. Uh, N.T. Wright takes us into uh, understanding how the prayer arises from Jesus' own first century context um, and how we can enter into that life uh, understanding what this prayer is all about from the perspectives of his disciples who asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. All right, so uh, if you want to know what it means when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, and all the way to the end of the prayer, join us. All right, I invite you to be with us again uh, this coming Thursday, beginning at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Saints Cafe continues this week, as usual, uh, tomorrow from noon to 1, and then again on Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Uh, for all of our leaders of organizations, please be reminded that today, by midnight, is the deadline for reports to vestry uh, to be in. So please uh, do submit those. As I said, uh, we know that the last few years, uh, we have not been able to do a whole lot in terms of ministry uh, in person uh, anyway. Uh, but even if you, you are sharing with the congregation uh, what you had planned or what you have planned uh, for the coming uh, cycle, uh, please do uh, include that in your report. Uh, the World Day of Prayer service is coming up on March 3rd, and I will invite uh, Connie and or Bev to Share a word, yeah. Okay, well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Our friends online, our friends online will not be able to hear you. Thinking about that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so just in regarding the World Day of Prayer service, some of you may remember that uh, I think it was maybe in 2017 or 2018 we were able to host. So for the World Day of Prayer Service this year, it's going to be on Friday, March the 3rd at 7 o'clock in person here at St. Stephen's. So we would love to see everyone. Father was asking earlier if it's only for women. <laughs> the reason he asked that and why I say you know, mainly women. It's because the organization is the Women's Interchurch Council that is the one that plans the service. And it's women who usually write the service for the World Day of Prayer. So this year, it's the women from Taiwan who uh, are writing the service. So the service is already given to us. We don't have to worry about that. But as the host, we want to do a little bit of decoration. Uh, the colors of the flag of Taiwan, they're like red and blue and white, you know, learning a little bit about the history so we too can uh, share with those who are participating. So we would like to invite everyone, the women and men, <laughs> uh, to plan to be here uh, in person if you can invite others. And as we go ahead, we're going to update you every week. So myself and Bev are going to be doing uh, some of the coordinating. And Arlene has already agreed that she will be doing the music for us. So planning is happening. And there will be about five churches in the area that will be joining us and participating in the service that evening. All right. So if you need more information, I can give you individually. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Connie and Bev, who are uh, leading the charge, and I encourage you again, uh, please, friends, plan to attend on March 3rd at 7 p.m. Um, if possible, we'll also live stream it, uh, but we are encouraging uh, those who are able to be present with us to please uh, come out. Also, if you notice uh, when you came in, uh, there are sign-up sheets uh, there uh, near the font uh, for all of our uh, opportunities for ministry. So we're inviting our Altar Guild members, our readers, our intercessors, uh, everyone uh, to come back uh, and to serve again in person. If you're interested in helping out with the, the children and the youth uh, for Sunday school, 
Also, uh, we are inviting your participation, so please do sign up and let us know, all right? We want to pray for and remember uh, the one person that I know of who is celebrating their birthday this week, uh, Miss Felicia Holder, who will be celebrating her birthday on the 31st, that is Tuesday, and so we pray for her and we pray God's blessings for her uh, as she begins this new year of life. Uh, we may not see Miss Holder here with us on Sunday, but I guarantee you that she is tuning in and watching the service, and she is with us uh, in spirit. And so we pray uh, for you, Miss Holder, as you mark your birthday on Tuesday. Friends, please stand now as we sing our recessional hymn, Lord of the Dance. Friends, let us now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.